Hi there. Welcome to another daily devotion. Our verses today come from Hebrews chapter 2, verses 14 through 18. Chapter 1 has gone through great lengths to establish Christ as nothing other than God himself. He's far superior, both in person and in office, to every created being, since he himself was not created, but rather always existed with God in eternity. Let's go ahead and read our verses together. Since, therefore, the children share in the flesh and blood, he himself likewise partook of the same things, that through death he might destroy the one who has power of death, that is the devil, and deliver all those who through fear of death were subject to lifelong slavery. For surely it's not the angels that he helps, but he helps the offspring of Abraham. Therefore he had to be made like his brothers in every respect, so that he might become a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people, For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he's able to help those who are being tempted. Now in the world we live in, because of the fallen nature of men, absolute power corrupts absolutely. But this is not so with Christ. Philippians 2, 6-8 tells us that even though Christ was in the form of God, he did not account equality with God a thing to be grasped, but he emptied himself, taking the form of a servant being born in the likeness of men. And being found in human form, he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Now this is good news as I was reminded of a statement made by Gregory of Nazianzus in his defense against Apollinarianism, which taught that Jesus was only partly human, but not fully human. He said, quote, that which is not assumed is not healed. End quote, meaning that if Christ didn't take on human nature just like our own, except without sin, he would not have the capacity to sympathize with our weaknesses, nor could he understand what it is to be tempted and move to be, do anything about it. Therefore, he would be insufficient to heal us, spiritually speaking. That's why the angel, along with the heavenly host, rejoiced and praised God over the incarnation of Christ, saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom he's pleased. Now, why specifically is it important that Christ was truly man and truly God in one person? Well, there's several reasons. First, he must be human to represent humanity. Next, in order to be our substitute sacrifice. Third, to be the mediator between God and man. Fourth, to be our example. Fifth, to resurrect in a human body and therefore ensure our own bodily resurrection. And lastly, to be our great sympathetic high priest. So how do we know that Jesus took on the fullness of humanity? Well, for one, Jesus had a human body. He was born of a virgin. He grew and became strong. There's other times we see he he grew weary. He became thirsty. He was hungry. He had flesh and bones. And remember, he said to Thomas, see my hands and feet. And Thomas was able to physically touch him. But Jesus also had a human mind. He increased in wisdom. He had a human soul and human emotions. He was troubled. He became sorrowful. He marveled at times. He expressed loud cries and he shed tears. He learned obedience and he was tempted just as we are. Another great piece of evidence as to the full humanity of Christ comes from those who were closest to him. They saw Jesus as only a man. They would ask questions like, where did this man get this wisdom and these mighty works? They would take offense out of him because of their unbelief. And and even his own brothers didn't believe in him until after the resurrection. So these are all proofs to anyone who would deny the full humanity of Jesus. Now, I don't know all the difficulties you're facing in your life per se or, or any of the temptations you face each and every day. But just as a parent who's lost a child or a person who knows the throes of addiction or or someone who's endured numerous health and physical challenges, you guys are best equipped to minister to those who are going through the same struggles. And so it is with Christ. We don't go through anything that he hasn't already gone through himself. Some of the circumstances might be different, but the feelings and emotions attached to these circumstances are really all the same. Christ has already endured what you're going through personally. And as our sympathetic high priest, he's able not only to sympathize, but also help you in your struggles according to the perfect will of God. So the application for us today is really twofold. One, 
we can approach the throne of grace with confidence that nothing we're going through is foreign to Christ. He humbled himself and has endured everything and more than that we'll ever face. I mean, he's an ever-present help in time of need. And second, he's our example. So the very trials you're going through not only sanctify you and make you more like him, but also provide a ministry opportunity for you. Have you lost a child? Have you struggled with addiction or battled physical, emotional, or mental issues, and Christ has comforted you through them and given you freedom? Well, then you're best equipped to come alongside those who are going through the same struggles. So let's ask the Lord today to bring someone to our mind who can, we can lend a sympathetic ear to and share our experience of how Christ has given us the power, strength, hope, and peace to endure these things for his glory. God bless you guys. May he reveal that person to you today. See you next time.